For a while now I've wanted to redo an old project of mine. The video of that project did very well on YouTube, but I felt the techniques I used for the project could have been better. Now a couple of years on, I think I'm at the stage where I can show you how to do it properly, or at least how I think I made a better job of it. Firstly, I must say a huge thank you to Nock, who gifted me many of the products and materials that I used in this video, including the amazing Grassmaster 3.0 Profi, which is their flagship static grass applicator. Okay, so let's get on with the build. So I'm going to start this piece with the tray that I picked up from a hardware store. It's quite a nice tray and it's got these handles here which I'm just going to cut down to create the river channel. So now I've rounded off the edges and it's time to sand them. So now it's time to start filling up the tray and for this I'm going to be using offcuts of extruded polystyrene. Right, so that's the tray filled. It's only a rough job, it only needs to be. And now I'm going to start building up the landform with some sculptor mould. Right, so that's the main landscaping done. You can see I've sculpted some undercuts into the banks there and also sculpted in some lumps and bumps. Now what I'm gonna do is sculpt some larger stones for the riverbed using more sculptor mold. Right, so now the sculptor mould has dried after about 24 hours or so. It's time to apply the undercoat of paint and for that I'll be using raw umber.
the undercoat's dried so now it's time to paint the stones and for that I'm just going to use a standard grey. I've mixed up some black and white. So with the painting done it's time to move on to earth texture and that will be brown grout but before I apply that I've got to paint the entire piece except for the stones with some scenic glue. You could use watered down PVA. To completely seal all that in place I'm going to give it a spray with isopropyl alcohol and some more scenic glue. I could touch up where the brown paint is showing through there but I think I'm going to leave that because I reckon it looks really quite nice. And now I'm going to add some roots along the eroded banks. These are just weed roots that I've picked and dried. This is an idea I picked up from Luke Towen so thanks very much to Luke and I'm just using Knox grass glue to stick them into the bank. Here I'm just adding some extra grout where the roots come out of the bank to add some extra realism. It'll just need a bit of scenic glue to secure that grout and yeah I'm pretty happy with that effect. Now it's on to static grass and first I'll be using some knock grass tufts. These are their extra large 9mm meadow variety and they just need a spot of grass glue underneath to secure them to the base. And with the long tufts down it's time to apply some static grass and I'll be using Knox flagship static grass applicator the Grassmaster 3.0 Profi I think I'm pronouncing that right and I think it means professional it's powered with eight 1.5 volt AA batteries giving a total voltage of 12 volts which is very powerful for an applicator like this Unfortunately I don't have any of Knox 2.5mm static grass but I've mixed up a blend of my own, this is 2mm. The applicator comes with three different sieve heads and for this shorter length of grass I'll need the fine sieve head. And of course I'll be using Knox special grass glue. I've just added a wire to the earthing clip here, just makes it easier to move the applicator about while keeping it earthed in the right place.
And now for another homemade blend of 6mm static grass. And for this I'll be using the medium sieve head. Just dabbing on some more grass glue. This is a bit tricky, I think I'll use layering spray for the next layer. But it works, so let's persevere, you just got to be a bit careful. Yep, looks pretty good I reckon. Very meadowy. And for the final layer I do have some knock static grass. Hooray! This is their wild grass 6mm beige. And as I said a word I'm using a layering spray instead of the glue. This is just an acrylic matte spray. And what this final beige layer does is it really knocks back the green and creates a lovely soft meadowy look. Now I'm just adding some ground up heather leaves. Heather leaves are very easy to grind up in your hands actually, so you don't even need to use a blender. Oh, but I should add they have to be dried up dead leaves. And I'll just seal all that in place using the usual method. The usual method being isopropyl alcohol to break the surface tension and then scenic glue, in case you were wondering. Now for the riverbed and I'm going to use some knock boulders, believe it or not these are boulders. Actually I bought this packet a while ago and I've been looking for an excuse and a project to use it on. And I'm also going to be using some bigger boulders which I made out of green stuff. And I'm going to be mixing them together with some raw umber paint into a kind of thick stony goo. But before I apply it to the riverbed, I'll need to paint the riverbed with some more glue. Again, this is the grass glue from Nock. And now I'm going to just spatula on and spread about the stones. With the stones down, it's time now to fix them in place with some scenic glue. This is going to take a good 24 hours to dry, I reckon. So in the meantime, I'm going to fix some stinging nettles from Nock around the scene. These are laser cut from special paper. And now that the stones have dried, and it did take 24 hours, or actually a bit more, I'm going to be highlighting some of them using Citadel paints. This is Kislev Flesh, Flayed One Flesh, and Cadian Flesh Tone. And now just a bit of game ink from Vallejo. This is Skin Wash. And I'm also using a bit of black green game ink. So 
So now I'm just going to sprinkle over a bit of fine ground foam to resemble moss. And once I've fixed all that in place with some isopropyl alcohol and scenic glue, that will be the riverbed complete. For the tree I've made a wire tree and I'm just going to test fit this before applying some green stuff and building up the bark texture. If you're worried about getting an allergic reaction from the putty, please do wear gloves. I've just left the ends of the branches bare because these will get covered anyway in texture. And for the bark texture I'm going to be using Vallejo Thick Mud. This is the Russian mud variety and it's a very thick acrylic paint paste and it's got lots of texture in it. And for some more bark texture I'm going to be using some more ground foam. This is an earth coloured variety as you can see. And I'll apply this over the still drying paint. And fix it in place with isopropyl alcohol and scenic glue as usual. Now I'm going to be using some nature trees from Nock to create the foliage for the tree. I'm just going to break off small clumps. And these are going to be coated in punched leaves, which were gifted to me by Diorama Presepe. So I'm going to dip each piece in some scenic glue and then coat it in the leaves. It takes a few hours for them to dry and some of the leaves have fallen off but nah whatever. Fallen leaves are going to be part of the scene. Now it's time to stick the foliage onto the branches and for this I'm going to be using some super glue gel and some spray activator. And once it's all built up, I'm going to seal it with some acrylic matte sealing spray. And then to fix the tree into the scene, I'm basically just going to have to bore a hole and use some PVA glue. Now since fallen leaves are going to be part of this scene, as I said, I'm going to spread some around the base of the tree and fix those in place with scenic glue. And now I'm going to glue some model ivy along the banks, especially over the roots. This is a collection of different ivies that I've accumulated over the years including some that was gifted to me by Diorama Presepe. For the River Resin Dam, I'm going to be using some acrylic plastic cut from a packet. This will give the river edge a nice glossy finish. It's 
going to have to be really well pressed down to avoid leaks. The resin I'll be using is crystal clear epoxy and this gets mixed in two equal parts. And I'll be tinting it using brown glass paint. This will take about 24 hours to cure hard. And while it's still wet, I'm just going to sprinkle over some more fallen leaves. Yep, yeah, I reckon that looks pretty good. A light misting with isopropyl alcohol will remove any bubbles. And the dam comes away very easily once everything is cured. Though there's a little bit of glue there, but that will be easy to remove with a thumbnail or a knife. And now I'll remove the meniscus where the resin creeps up the dam with a sharp knife. And now it's time for one of my favourite parts which is making ripples with Mod Podge Gloss. This is a very satisfying process. I'm just going to apply a fairly thickish layer over the surface of the resin. And then blow it about with a straw in the direction of flow. So this is how it looks before the Mod Podge has dried. And this is how it looks after the Mod Podge has dried. Now I'm going to add some knock foam and spume, also known as foam and spray, around the rocks. This goes on white, but with some feathering out it dries into a kind of translucent white. And it adds a really lovely subtle white water effect. And there we have it, my ultimate river, or stream if you prefer. I really enjoyed this build, I hope you enjoyed watching and that you got something out of it. Thanks ever so much to Nock for gifting me their materials. Thanks also to everyone who subscribed to my channel and left such lovely comments under my videos, it really means a lot to me. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Cheerio!